Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Knowledge Bolide Weekly Hangout, sponsored by Topher Spin Meteorites. It is, what, September 13th, and we are doing a show on a topic that everyone seems to have interest in, um, meteor wrongs. So we have a lot of rock hounds uh, who watch my channel and comment and, and ask for rock IDs, and uh, I hope you guys understand that I don't have time to spend with everyone individually so these videos are my way of helping you this is my personal way of reaching out as best i can and giving you the most accurate information on meteor wrongs possible so um we have the crew with us backing me up today we have mike kelly going to be doing a 101 we haven't had mike kelly do a 101 in a while so it's gonna be like old times um we have some show and tell we have some videos to splice in so I recently started YouTube membership and Patreon support. This is a way for you to basically support what I'm doing here and what the crew is doing here and allow me to spend more time doing it. Um, there are there are several membership levels, but it's very, very simple. Very simple. If you want to watch videos on YouTube and that's all you want to do, you join for $10 a month and you watch everything you want. Or you can join for $20 a month. And if you buy a meteorite, you get the $20 back. Simple. Go out to Patreon. You have three choices. Number one, support me for $10 a month. Buy a meteorite, you get that money back. Number two, support me as an educate, educational supporter. And you get access to digital downloads to help you convey this scientific information to your classes. That's $25. And you get your money back with a meteorite purchase. Number third. Number third, yeah, number third, the rock counter. Yes, just announced right now. This is what everyone's been asking about, whether you've been asking about it or not. So now you don't get money back with the, with the meteorite purchase, but for $25 a month, you get access to all the content that I'm creating, everything. You get uh, access to one meteorite, hopefully rock ID per month. So you can submit a video. I'll tell you exactly how, what needs to be done. If you follow those rules, I and the crew, people smarter than me with more information about what it is rather than what it isn't, will hopefully rein in, ring in and give you some information. And it should be a very, very, very good thing for everyone. We have rock hunters out there who need to get rock IDs. We definitely can't do it one-on-one. -on -one. So the people who are going to support me, you get preferential treatment. Thank you. You're awesome. I, I want to tell you guys, because I, I do understand how a rock hound can get something in their head and not want to let it go this is mine this is my white whale this was purchased as a 43.4 gram fusion crusted martian shergatite and the only question i had after having it in my collection for a year is are you sure this is a shergatite hundred dollars a gram or is this a knock light thousand dollars a gram so I put it on Facebook and a bunch of people that I recommend that I um, respect their opinions reigned in. And that was the only discussion. Was it a knock light or was it a sugar type? So I finally had Mike uh, Kelly. I'm glad he's with us today. Mike Kelly slice it up and send it over to Daniel shake. Daniel shake did the testing on it and said, you got a bunch of earth there, buddy. I think. You should have Dr. Karen Ziegler do oxygen isotope testing on it. She's the she's the de facto go-to. So I did that. She comes back. You have a nice hunk of earth. Mm. I can't let it go. I can't let it go. It's got fusion crust and it looks like Mars. You guys are looking at videos right now side by side with it with Mars knock light and it looks indecipherable. So I know what it's like to have that worm, that rock eating in your brain and you can't let it go. We're here to help. 
this is going to be your therapy so you can let go of those and move on to the next find and hopefully have a winner. Now, this is the Rockhound Fever talking. I'm the owner of the world's first Earth meteorite. <laughs> it's Earth, but it has fusion crust. My point is proven. <laughs> we have some uh, some examples to show, and we're, we're going to jump right to uh, Mikey. Uh, Mikey Bolin is going to join us um, with some pseudo meteorites. All right. So uh, this first one was found off the side of the road, just going for a walk. It was found like this. Um, it, it was about two inches in the dirt off the side, asphalt road, but it was highly magnetic. Well, when I cut into it, whoa, it, it, uh, it is iron. It tests positive for nickel, but there is zero chondrules. Now, uh, positive for nickel by the chemical test? Yes, by okay. this uh, meteorite ID, which by only that. tests for about less than 1%. Right. And th those, those chemical tests are very unreliable. They're, they work for testing jewelry for nickel allergies, but uh, they're not really a gold standard. I 99% I think this is industrial slag. I talked to a lot of people and mm -hmm. I, I sent this off and this is less than 1% nickel. So it is not much nickel whatsoever. Yeah, that's not enough nickel. Does it, does it attract a magnet very, very strongly? Oh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So likely to be uh, old slag, uh, smelting slag when the process was nowhere near as efficient. And being beside the road is a, is a big clue because mm -hmm. they've used slag for roadbed and particularly railroad bed. I so, agree. There is a railroad track close by to this area that I did find it at. And long story short, if you're searching by the railroad track, you're going to find slag. Slag is going to come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Here's another one. Wow, you got some nice slag. <laughs> <laughs> seriously that's fantastic uh, I'm, I'm gonna show some saracho slices next to this uh, on the edit because it it i want to show uh a meteor wrong with the meteor right next to 100%. it yeah. and i i think that one is super cool to put next to a saracho because it kind of looks I could see it looking like olivines of a palisite. Can we see the other one for a second? Because that one looked really interesting. So this one, I have about like a, oh, wow. 10 kilos of this material. And all found on... It's really weird. This white and black... I'm not even going to call it silicate. I'm going to call it like a carbonate. Um all that shiny is metal it's iron there's an, it tests positive on the nickel id but the the test from the lab that i sent it to said less than one percent nickel yeah, yeah so the course. lab you sent it to probably did an xrf test and that is yes. dramatically more accurate there are zero chondrules um i am 99% sure this is slag. Um, I thought I had gold. I was 100% sure that this was meteorites and it was too good to be true. And I finally came to my conclusion that uh, <laughs> it's very cool slag. Yeah. And uh, I need to spend my time searching elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. That I, I appreciate you sharing this with us because those are um the more interesting higher quality slags that i that i've seen most of them um i would love to show you the samples that i have they have like huge like the, the vesicles that you were showing were, were were really small almost mistakable with with meteorite vesicles in, in the in ones that you pointed out but most of the slag is so just twisted and and globular with so many holes in it and really when you cut it 
then you see there's so many voids in there and those voids are totally different as you were saying than vesicles so also another thing to note when i cut this it's almost like a black uh water coming out now when i cut meteorites it's brown mm -hmm. almost always brown that's another thing to keep in mind about you know the color of the cut and the color of the, of the scratch so really appreciate that mikey Absolutely. you're like mikey right not mike Right. Mikey, Mikey, Michael, right. it's all good. Cool. Thank you, Mikey, Mike. Um, <laughs> next, we have Allison with some show and tell. So Allison has some NWA unclassified and some yet unverified. Are you with us, Allison? I am. How's everyone tonight? I have these two side by side, and they look similar. One is a stone that I found, and one is an unclassified NWA. The outsides don't look as similar as the polished interiors. This is the meteorite. You can see all the metal in it. That's a really great angle to see all of the actual nickel iron in that. And then uh, you can see some chondrules at this angle. There's a chondral here. There's maybe one up here. And now when we look at the meteor wrong, we'll look at the polished surfaces of these again first. You could, if you were really, again, I, I was convincing myself for quite some time that this mm -hmm. was a meteorite. This could possibly be a chondral up here. Maybe even a dark one right here. Maybe even one up here. But what this is lacking that that NWA has is visible metal. We do see some things that shine and they look silvery, but those are gonna probably be silicates of some kind, especially since that changes as I change the direction of this rock, where you notice that the metal in this piece, it really, it doesn't matter really what direction we're looking at it at, we're seeing that in that rock. So going from the, the polished surfaces and seeing that this one is obviously lacking the metal, to this one having the metal, there's your good side by side. So, Let's talk about the outside of the meteorite first. On the outside, we are seeing some, some little bits that may be chondral, some bits that may be some fusion crust up in here. What we don't see on our meteorite are things like conchoidal fractures, which are fractures that look like a seashell, rounded, that look like a seashell. And we don't really see these like super sharp 90s Again, this is the meteor wrong. We're not seeing any contraction cracks. We're not seeing any fusion crust. What we are seeing is that sparkly silicate again. Yes. Look how sparkly that silicate is. We are not seeing metal blebs or chondrules in this rock. You know, this is definitely meteor wrong here. We don't really get lines and things like that happening in meteorites. Again, it's just kind of sharp and angular, yep. like it's broken. And we don't really get a lot of those really super sharp angles and features in meteorites. I do believe that this in particular meteor wrong is a sandstone of some sort that is quite heavy with iron. Um, another thing we want to do really quick is the good old magnet test. So obviously holding a magnet, it actually holds it a little stronger than this NWA does. Hmm. You can see that, hear that. It's very, very common to see those flat reflecting surfaces sparkle back at you. And in the rock hound world, sometimes they call those druzy crystals, but that, that sort of look. But what we're seeing there is light reflecting off a flat surface. As we look at your meteorite there, you, we notice a number of cracks down into the surface of the meteorite, and it looks like the rock is forcing itself open. And in fact, that is what's happening. Uh, because 95% of meteorites contain iron in the metallic state, when iron rusts, it expands. And that cracks open the rock a bit, which allows water to get down in there to rust the iron a little more, 
and crack it open a little more. And that, that process repeats itself. We're seeing that here on this rock because of the iron in it. So there's, there's two more descriptors, cracks and rusty looking versus drowsy reflecting crystal faces. And texturally, this is, it feels smooth. And that's, that's versus this that almost feels like a rough sandpaper. If you're going to find a meteorite, you're most likely going to find a chondrite, an ordinary chondrite, rather than an iron or a palisite. Just the, the odds are, are just there for that. But anyway, um, those are the two I had side by side. And I have just one quick bonus meteor wrong here bonus, bonus. that I showed to the crew one time. We actually got quite excited because this, outside of this very magnetically attracted rock, um, looks almost like a fusion crust, and it almost has a melted appearance. And the real, I mean, I think everybody kind of gasped just a little bit and said, now hold the phone, what have you got there? But oh. the real kicker here, look how porous this side is. I did yep. take a, a window into this, and it is very there's no chondrules in there there's really nothing going on in fact i believe that this may be some kind of a hematite or just a native ironstone i haven't i don't recall streaking this but a streak test would answer that question yeah. real fast well allison i think you did a fantastic job i mean better than better than average even for you so yeah. that says a lot so yeah my light light wasn't cooperating with me but we, we, uh, we did get to look at some interesting um, differences that you'll eventually get an eye for if you keep at this. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you spend enough hours touching rocks, you start knowing what they feel like. And the same is true with meteorites. So mm -hmm. thank you very much, Allison. We're, we are going to break to a video right now that we shot a little bit ago of Pat Brown talking about something that's commonly... Uh, misconstrued as a meteorite and uh, this is a vent effect. So this is a great example of a vent effect with Pat. Hey Pat, do you have a meteorong to show us? I do have a meteorong. When the lighting is right, don't those look like ragmaglyphs? They totally do. I actually had to ask you if that was a meteorong. <laughs> yeah, uh, this one is one that I... Uh, I found on a meteorite hunting trip to an area that I think is probably going to produce some meteorites. There's an area in eastern Washington that has a very, very old surface. And this one was buried with only this little part showing here. And my heart stopped for a little while. And then I dug I it up. <laughs> and it turns out that like many of the the meteorongs that are posted on meteorite or meteorong and is it a meteorite uh this is a vent effect so it is a cobble or boulder of basalt and it's vesicular basalt so it shows these bubbles this part of the rock was buried this part of the rock was <laughs> was exposed and with the wind blowing one direction and blowing sand it has excavated those bubbles into uh, faux regmaglyphs and how many the, pounds is that i uh, don't i i'll i can find out i'll put it on the scale it's it's a few kilos but I was uh, I was extremely excited to uh, to see that one there. There you can see that they look like ragmaglyphs. And this uh, rock also has some desert varnish on it, so it's darker on the top, which makes it look even more like a meteorite. There's the focus. Now you can see how they look like they tail off as ragmaglyphs. That's a really good explanation of how that's formed. Thanks, Pat. Yeah, thank you. And that's what I have. Well, it is a wonderful, wonderful time that we get to welcome Mike Kelly back with his 
patent pending Meteorite 101 segment. We absolutely look forward to these every single time. So, sir, I will do your slides. Thank you very much. What do you got for us? Got a uh, got a uh, hard show to uh, follow up on with Allison. That was great, Allison. So, uh, <laughs> media wrongs, that just ain't right. <laughs> so, this is kind of interesting stuff up front. So, there's actually 71 media wrongs listed in the Met Bowl. Uh, and those are down under pseudo meteorites. If you want to look uh, and plug that into the classification field when you do your search, uh, that will pull up all 71 of those. So you can see what's in there. And there's some absolute classics in there that I'm sure we'll be seeing in the uh, in the video here. Some of the other things that I kind of put in the fun facts. Uh, so slag, uh, we discussed slag. That stuff can contain some really odd things that aren't so great for your health that they put in the uh, when they're making uh, things like iron and steel. So uh, just a word of caution, you know, if you're cutting things that are slag or you're handling them to a, a high degree or, or, you know, windowing something and creating dust, uh, you know, gloves, dust masks, good cautions and procedures, wash your hands when you're done touching them before you eat something, you know, slag can actually be pretty bad for you. Wow. Uh, I didn't know that. So I'm glad you, I'm glad you, brought that up because I never would have thought about it. this is just industrial waste this is chemicals it's it's metals it's ex can you briefly explain what what slag is and how ubiquitous is it out there yeah so so slag is is a descriptive term that we use for any byproduct of of a manufacturing process uh to make man-made materials uh, it's mostly used uh, in in our context for uh, smelting of iron or, or the production of steel. Uh, and so there's all sorts of additives they put in there. And uh, a lot of times what happens is all that stuff floats to the top of the melted material they're making and they skim it off and just dump it until it cools. And so uh, you'll see little bits of metal in there from you know them skimming some of the good metal off, off that mixture. Uh, but there's a lot of additives uh, in, that they put in there in order to, to get the right mix that just floats to the top and is lighter than the, the metals they're producing. And that's what they got to skim off to have a pure final product. So yeah, you're just basically looking at pure impurities. Uh, <laughs> nice. Thank you, man. Yep. A lot of media wrongs out there. Some good, some bad. Uh, you know, a lot of people would rock, rock fever out there. You know, the meteorite hobby is supposed to be fun. So try to pass the knowledge along, try to try to convince, try, you know, try to give your best opinion. Uh, but, you know, a lot of times I just get to the point where, hey, it's not worth arguing. You know, this is my opinion. I put it out as my opinion, uh, you know, when someone asks me what something is and I, I'm not there to get in an argument with anybody. Exactly. Uh, so I kind of break up media wrongs into three categories. I got the very, very media wrongs. Um, and you had kind of mentioned this uh, earlier, Topher, that you had some very vesicular basalts. Uh, right. And you know, again, those I, I grew up in the very obvious someone who has looked at lots of meteorites can quickly pick those out and say that's you know you're you're not really even close even if you know google lens is telling them that it's a, a meteorite mm -hmm. the same thing you know just like the natural vesicular basalts uh vesicular slags oftentimes the slags will have a lot of big bubbles in there uh because there's gas trapped in it and as that stuff cools rapidly that gas expands and tries to get out of that material and so it's very bubbly uh, you also have people who will uh, find bits of slag that are magnetic and dark black, but they're glassy. Like Allison was saying, you should never have any of that conchoidal fracture, that glassy type break, uh, because meteorites are not glassy really in nature at the uh, the large scale. Uh, the really silly things, mill balls. Uh, so again, when they're processing materials, they'll have these uh, aluminum mill balls uh, uh, that... Uh, are processed and they're big and white and people will swear up and down that they're, you know, Ionsdale diamonds from outer space. <laughs> they're, they're millbles. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're a form of aluminum oxide. It sound kind of in a joking way. Anything that's a giant black mass of glassiness uh, mm. is uh, magically a uh, carbonano diamond from outer space. Yeah. Uh, so again, that, those glassy items, they're, they're not giant diamonds from outer space. Uh, very common, uh, Natural product is is hematite and magnetite, which are both iron oxides. Again, they're they're ter terrestrially weathered bits of terrestrial iron, uh, or uh, sometimes you know that that material can have a lot of uh, sedimentary material in it. So it might be a sandstone with a lot of iron, uh, limonite oxides that's kind of acting as the glue holding that rock together. 
And again, sometimes they'll have an interesting, smooth, shiny outer exterior that, that uh, if you're not really used to fusion crust, could kind of look like fusion crust. Mm -hmm. And the final one I had on there was uh, Uids. So that's Uidic rocks are a form of sedimentary rock. And uh, what Uids are are a little particle that rolls around and accretes other material around it. And it forms almost like a pearl structure. Uh, but obviously, you know, it's, it's not uh, organic in nature. It's a natural sedimentary function. But when all those uids come together, they kind of look like chondrules. Yeah, yeah. You so uh, you get one. some some media wrongs that are uidic. And again, if you then take those uh, little naturally formed accretions and you uh, cement them together with something that's high in limonite and iron oxide, it's highly magnetic. You know, mm -hmm. it might have a dark exterior, be smooth, but have little chondrule-like bits sticking out. Uh, so those aren't great once you learn about what woods are, but uh, you see them commonly as a, as a meteorong. Yeah, and I that was one that I actually found in an NWA unclassified bin in Tucson and paid money for. And then we discovered on the show together what it was, and that's what it was, an Uy. Uh So, yep. yeah, very, very uh, perplexing if you don't know. Exactly. Uh, next category, I bracket things up, getting a little closer to things that uh, look like rights are the kind of wrongs. Um, and so you have natural processes out there that will take an earth rock and it will create a weathering rind on it. Uh, and so those weathering rinds a lot of times can be dark and satiny and, and have a look almost like a, a real fusion crust. Kind of the things that I always like to try to do is I like to look at the edges where there are breaks. You know, when, when meteorite crust flakes off, meteorite crust is usually pretty fragile. Uh, and as it spalls off or breaks off, it usually breaks with a crisp break to it. Um, you'll, you'll get a very sharp boundary, whereas weathering rinds a lot of times are kind of softer and are build up onto the material. And so they'll have a more transitional rounded edge to them. Uh, and so that's why real good pictures when you're talking media wrongs are important to really be able to get in and look at details close up in addition to getting a full zoomed out full rock view of it. Because like some of the things Pat mentioned are, you want to take some of these factors and put them all together. You want to look at the small details and you want to look at the whole thing uh, in order to get a, get a good idea of uh, how many factors that would be positive or negative towards it being a meteorite you actually have. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. And just like the weather uh, rinding, uh, you can also get phosphate buildups. And so uh, phosphate buildups are a very dark, very black type of coating that forms naturally on rocks. And so, again, it can be tricky. A lot of times the phosphate buildups, if they've uh, had a lot of time to form, will be much thicker than you would actually get a real fusion crust to accomplish. Uh, so that's another thing I'm looking for when I'm trying to make my determination. Is that crust or is it one of these other two, you know, naturally occurring uh, buildup processes uh, that are just happening on the outside of terrestrial rocks? Uh, these are things that I considered uh, de uh, decent imposters from the standpoint of uh, visual only. Um, so some limestones will be brecciated and they will have some uh, very dark matrixy looking parts with some very uh, uh, contrasted white angular brecciated class within them. Uh, and they make a pretty good terrestrial analog to a visual um, uh, feldspathic breccia or fragmental breccia. Um, Again, there, there's easy ways to test, and I'll cover kind of some of the tests that you can go through to, to weed out media wrongs besides the visual. Uh, but yeah, there's the last couple of years, I've seen some really good looking, just from a visual standpoint, uh, lunar media wrongs. <laughs> um, again, some of the, the non porous slags, uh, the exterior on them can have a surface that looks very much like a legitimate crust of a meteorite, it looks like. Um, It'll get smooth, it'll get kind of satiny, it'll be black, and also have kind of some of those areas where it's got a lighter brownish, um, magnetite-ish uh, uh, exterior look to them. Again, a lot of the things with the meteorongs is is stacking factors together in order to, to make your opinion on is it right or is it wrong. Uh, you never want to just use one factor alone. The, the last one on there is kind of interesting. This is, this is for those fresh meteorite fall hunters. Uh, some of the best things I've been tricked out when when hunting fresh falls is actually really old weathered rubber tire. Uh, yeah. That stuff gets that smooth, satiny, silky uh, black exterior going to it, just like a fresh meteorite would have. 
Uh, and a lot of times they're steel belted radial. They, they hop onto the magnet, you know, <laughs> and, and you're thinking you're good to go, but then you give it a little bit of a squeeze and you realize uh, that though it's pretty hard from, from cracking and drying and weathering in the sun, it's just not right. Wow. I bet that drove you crazy in Cranfield. Was that the one? That, yeah. Cranfield. Yeah. That was a, uh, there was a lot of that. Wow. That sucks. Um, I want to go back to this slide for one second. Um, these are some of the things before I was involved in meteorites. I didn't know that there was slag everywhere. I didn't know that wherever a railroad was like forget hunting near that it's this go somewhere else. We're going to have more success. I didn't know about mill balls. I didn't know about oil. Oil. I can't say it, dude. Oils. Oils. <laughs> Weeds. Okay. Um, but there, so these are all things I've learned about through meteorics, meteoritics about being wrongs, but there's also some things that I've heard about that are given kind of local names like, um, Moki balls. Um, do you know what I'm getting at? Uh, the Moki, uh, balls or Moki, Moki marbles are concretions that usually, uh, uh Mike has explained the process, but has hematite or, or limonite uh, that's, that has cemented uh, sedimentary bits together, and that's how we get those moqui marbles. Okay, because they're, they're named differently depending on what part of what state they're they're yes they they they, they occur in some geologic formations uh commonly um uh, and, and so have names like that but in general those would be called concretions or sometimes they're even called iron uh, concretions even though they don't have metallic iron they have uh oxides and and uh, uh other products of iron thank you pat appreciate you jumping in there so yeah, another factor I look at is uh, if there appears to be a crust, um, is there contrast between the exterior of the piece and the interior of the piece? So most meteorites, unless they're incredibly weathered and the crust is gone, the exterior and interior is going to have a sharp contrast uh, where the crust would have formed. Again, that crust formed by ablative heating, and so it's melted and it's microcrystalline. Um, and then the interior is typically on a lot of meteorites, light gray, dark gray, or different color than the exterior would be. Um, so if you totally lack that contrast and it looks like the material transitions very smoothly and the inside is the exact same as the outside, mm -hmm. uh, to me, it's a high chance of being a meteorite. Um, I'm also looking for things like what minerals can I pick out in there? Again, it's visual idea of minerals. Visual idea of minerals isn't perfect, but if I see things that look like quartz grains in there, uh, or features that don't belong, such as uh, sedimentary layering going on. Again, those are all things that I'm going to factor in and say, hey, probably not a meteorite. Uh, we talked location a little bit with uh, with Mike, and he brought up a good point. You know, anywhere where there's railroads and slag and everything else. So what's the location? You know, if, if it's found in a location that's going to be a high probability of finding meteor wrongs, that should factor in. So location is key. Personal knowledge base. Again, who, who's doing the finding? You know, are they versed in meteorites or not? Or is this their first find or the first thing they're showing? How much do they have a background in being able to hunt meteorites uh, is a factor that I take into play. And then, again, what's if it looks like it has a crust, what am I looking for in that crust? I'm looking for things like contraction cracks. Contraction cracks are usually very angular in the, uh, the polygonal type pattern they break into. Uh, mm -hmm. So again, if I see things that has cracks in what looks like the crust, but they're kind of more flowing and smoothly transitioning, then I usually don't think that that's something that would be a, uh, a meteorite. Uh, and finally, you know, most meteorites are chondrites. So again, I'm looking for chondrules. Um, yeah. The chance that you found that first American lunar achondrite, <laughs> again, a harder sell to make. Yeah. Yeah, upwards of 85 to 90 plus percent of meteorites are going to be chondrites and they're going to have chondrules in them. So, yeah, very good to keep in mind, man. So this is uh, some of the things you can do. Again, none of these in and of themselves short of going and getting a meteorite classified is definitive. Um, but these are short of classifications and things you could do beyond visual. Um, right. So a lot of times we talk like hematite, magnetite. Those are iron oxides. So if you find something, they may look like an iron meteorite. Uh, you can use a multimeter and do a resistance test. 
Uh, iron oxides do not have the same conductivity and resistance as uh, like pure iron would, right? Iron is going to uh, transmit an electric current much uh, with much less resistance. So again, hook it up, test the resistance, see if you have something that's all oxides or something that's actually me uh, metallic. Um, streak test. Streak test is another way you can differentiate between metal and things like hematite and magnetite. Uh, if you get a rustish reddish brown streak, you have hematite. If you get a very dark blackish gray streak, you have magnetite. Again, if it was iron, it would it would not leave a streak like that on a piece of unglazed porcelain. Um, obviously, if you do have a chunk of metal, you can etch it. Um, not all meteorites etch, right? There are attack sites that don't etch, but the majority of iron meteorites do etch. So again, although not 100% definitive, you know, it's a good way if you get a, a very distinct uh, woods Mattenstein pattern going on, you got a meteorite. That goes for uh, windowing a specimen. You know, a lot of times the interior can tell us a lot more than the exterior. Uh, so if you can get a diamond file and open a small window so you can start looking at all those interior characteristics we mentioned, that's definitely a positive for helping to identify something. Expert opinion consensus, and my emphasis is on the consensus, right? Ask people who are versed in, in visually IDing meteorites because they've spent hours and days and months of their time, you know, learning how to pick out meteorites, what their opinion is. Uh, again, value their opinion. They spent hours and days and weeks, you know, studying meteorites in order to build up that ability. Um, but again, don't go by one person's opinion. Get get a consensus out there, you know, ask multiple people. Um, XRF was already talked about a little bit. Again, that, that'll that tell you what the composition is to a relatively high degree uh, of confidence. So that'll help figure out if you have enough nickel in there to be in the meteorite zone or not be in the meteorite zone. Um, some people mentioned asphalt and some other dark products. So I, I added the hot pin test here. Uh, you know, if you put a hot pin on it and it starts melting in, it's not a meteorite. We mentioned those really uh, good visually looking bits of uh, limestone. Uh, again, if you use dilute acid and you pour it on something that is a uh, carbonate base, you'll get fizzing there uh, and you'll get a, a uh, acid reaction with carbonate. And again, that'll help you eliminate the fact that that's not a meteorite. Uh, and the last ones are the kind of the jokish ones. So this kind of all ties back to the who's telling me it. they think they found a meteorite. Uh, I've seen all sorts of very bizarre comments out there uh, from it turns the lights on and off when you touch it. Uh, it. It makes that diamond reader go off the charts all the way to green. Uh, I touch it to other rocks and it shoots sparks or, you know, if I if I take it out and expose it to air, it spontaneously combusts. Yeah. You know, <laughs> stuff like that in, in the, the crazy it. realm is, uh, is is those human factors that help to show you that it's probably not a meteorite without me even looking at it. Yeah, yeah. Well, well said. I, I love uh, just to, to tack on to that before we go to the next slide. You start off the, the bullet point number one, resistance testing. And you talk from a scientific viewpoint of why you should expect different results and what those results are going to mean. Then we'll get people every once in a while send us a video of them powering a light bulb with a rock. It's like that's not what we're talking about, guys. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I every time I see a video with a, a a light being powered by a rock, I'm just like, yeah, that's that's not how science is done. <laughs> Still makes me laugh though, just like you're laughing right now, man. It's, yeah, it's a it's, it's just nuts that 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 could be convincing to anyone. So. I had your last slide up there about uh, how to improve your uh, meter identification skills. Yeah, and this this is all from a visual effect. And and again, you know, basically what I did was when I wanted to try to start identifying meteorites and, and get better at identifying even what type of meteorite I thought it was going to be. And again, visual is never 100%, right? Visual is not classification. It's It's to help narrow things down. I went on the meteorite picture of the day. So you can scroll back years and years and years. And pretty much, I think, out of every everything I've ever witnessed on there, I think there was one wrong on that site that I've ever run across looking through over a decade of, of posted photos on there. They screen very hard to ensure that everything on there is a legit classified known meteorite. Yeah. Uh, and so that's a great resource if you just want to get 
pictures of nothing but meteorites. Um, and again, look at the features and start trying to pick things out. And uh, what you can do is look at the picture, and they always have a great description underneath on what it actually is. Look at the picture. Don't look at the description. Figure out what it is in your head and then guess and then check and just keep whittling away at it until you're right more often than you're wrong. And I'm going to I'm gonna piggyback on that because the picture, the meteor picture of the day is really, really interesting. And a lot of times it's not just one picture. It's a picture that you can dive in with more pictures. Um, and there's the poster is always happy to answer or address any comments left there. So you can leave a comment like, hey, what's that black thing at three o'clock? And he or anyone else who with knowledge can go in there will answer. So it's a good way of learning. It's interactive. It's not just looking at pictures all day long. You can actually interact and chat with people. Yep. And then the other reference I have in there are solid meteorite groups. Well, in groups like your group, Topher, groups where we don't put suspect meteorite pictures up. So what you're going to see on the group is meteorite pictures, not a blend of meteorites and meteorongs where you could accidentally start looking at something going, well, gee, maybe, you know, if, if that's a meteorite, what I have kind of looks like that. And it's a very obvious meteorong. So, yeah, the, the well-policed groups out there are another great resource. Yeah, lurk, lurk in meteorite, meteorong. Take guesses on things and wait for the experts to weigh in and and see what the, the general consensus of opinions on folks who've looked at thousands of meteorites are. And then finally, like you said, break that break that trend. Get yourself a meteorite. Break the need yes. for everything you find to be a meteorite. Uh, there's no better way to study meteorites than to have them in hand. You know, you really want to get an understanding of what contraction cracks look like on a meteorite and, and that angularity and polygonal nature to which they they kind of uh, form a web around the meteorite get a, a nice meteorite with fresh black fusion crust with cracks in it and hold it and observe it fantastic i absolutely agree with you uh, i we did add two th I, I do want to add something on here you said lurk in the meteorite meteor wrong i just want to point out that's a facebook group uh, that does rock identifications um so that's on Facebook. Uh, another um, ally you have to improve your meteorite identification skills is the Metville Encyclopedia of, of Meteorites. So these are pictures that are published in the Metville along with the classification. So if you go there and you type in and just look at Vinales, you'll see vetted pictures of Vinales meteorite within the Metville. So that is the Metbolt you know, Encyclopedia of Meteorites, and Sue added that one uh, after the fact. But I, it's I, managed I, by the IMCA. Oh, it's managed by the IMCA. Thank you, babe. Yeah, I highly, I highly recommend those pictures because uh, they're delivered to you every day. And also, like you said, nothing like having it in your hand and and feeling and knowing what a meteorite feels like, what the weight density is, those type of things. So just a little call, call to action if you guys want to support me on uh, YouTube or on uh, Patreon. On Patreon, I do one rock identification a month if that's the level you choose. Dave, show us what you have. Okay. This is a piece of magnetite. Uh, whenever somebody brings me a meteorite, it usually ends up as a magnetite and because it Literally, you can get a magnet to stick to it really well. And uh, uh, I think people have heard that, well, you know, if it's a meteorite, you got to have a magnet stick to it. And, you know, that it's not really true, but it's one of the tests. But that's just only the beginning test. You have to actually look inside a little bit. But there's no fusion crust or anything on here. or it's, it, it doesn't look like a solid piece of iron like this one. So this is a Canyon Diablo. Uh, there are similarities, but uh, there's fresh metal inside of this, while uh, this one uh, does not. You can file a, uh, a edge of it and you won't see that shiny uh, metal. It'll look the same as it does here, only it'll be uh, smooth. And uh, so that's one of the things you have to look out for uh, if you're going to find. Now, most of the time, if you're going to find a meteorite, it's probably not going to be an iron meteorite. Those are the one of the most rare types. It'll mostly be a stony meteorite. And when you file a little uh, 
part of it off, you'll very likely see little shiny uh, inclusions of uh, metallic iron. Those are never in uh, earth rocks. Uh, you never see those in earth rocks. And uh, that's a very good indication that it's a, uh, a meteorite. And that's what I have. Thank you, David. Thanks, David. Oh, I have a few items here that are, these are famous meteor wrongs, if you will. So this is something that looks a lot like a mesosiderite but it is 100% terrestrial. And I, this is a I nice- I that one, Topher. I was right there. Yeah. You don't usually see very many end cuts or external parts of this, but this is um, Putarana. This is a <clears throat> native iron from Russia, Kazakhstan, something like that. Yeah, that's the one I wanted to comment on, Topher. Mm -hmm. The closest to being a- meteorite without um, being a meteorite yeah. yeah it totally looks like an iron yeah so th this is the actual this is the actual putarana native iron and here is another something is that a meteorite or not look at your show and tell sheet it, is that nova 009 yep that's all. It's, everything's written on your itinerary. Yep. I was basically seeing if anyone knew if this oh, was a meteorite I'm or sorry. not. But this is Nova. definitely. Oops. No, yeah, but just is... means it's of it's from an unknown area. Yep. But boy, that that looks like it. if that's a meteor wrong, it's a really good one. Yeah. But what's interesting is when you see these like this, you can definitely see how there are some parts of earth that look like meteorites especially this right here there's not a whole lot of uh um na native iron that looks like that um a couple yeah, just, places in kazakhstan russia places like that just finding native iron that is iron that's in the metallic state mm -hmm. is very rare on earth because we have a lot of water water rests iron thoughts on this yeah, it's looking kind of wrong to me. It's really porous. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of porosity up in here. Yeah. Let's look and, at the outside. And the black part is pretty uniformly black. It doesn't really have any texture features to it. Yeah. The closer you get, the uglier it is. <laughs> but um, at first glance, you could see how someone could say, oh, wait, I have a meteorite, but no, it's not. So I wanted to, the, the reason I'm showing these is these are the rarities of, of earth stuff. You're not going to walk out in the field and find one of these necessarily. I did look up the area that it's from. It's really north. It looks like it's probably Siberia. It's right um, south of the Kara Sea, but it, it's way up there. I don't think there's a lot of people living up there. If they're living up there, they're as hard as this stuff. Does anyone know what this terrestrial sample is? Uh, is this one a lava bomb? You are correct. This is a, uh, uh, what is it? The olivine, an olivine bomb that gets yeah. ejected out of a volcano. Right. So, so in within magma areas, there are are if there's a, a area that's molten for a long time, the denser crystals will fall to the bottom, and that's what an olivine bomb is, and then it gets burped out. And I'm showing it next to this. Does anyone want to ring in if that's a meteorite or not? Looks good to me. I see metal. I see cracks. Yep. This is a, a very rare meteorite called the Lodronite. And I wanted to pull it out because everyone always says, oh, I found the rarest thing in the world. Well, the, the Lodronites are pretty rare and it, it may look like this. The olivine and peroxines, they're, they're present here on Earth. So you're going to find a lot of material that looks alike. But on this, you literally see the metal embedded in here. You literally see... Uh, I believe sodium diopside crystals. So definitely different than 
Uh, here's the other side of the olivine bomb. And olivine bombs can be even a higher percentage olivine than that. Oh, I yes. Yeah. I once bought an olivine bomb at uh, Tucson that had been, had, had kind of a crusty side on it and it had been worked on and tooled very carefully to look like a meteorite. So hmm. everyone could be fooled. I will say that him showing that and show and tell, it's not really capturing all of the crystals that you can see in person. Yeah. On yeah. the outside of it. <laughs> Here is another uh, one that I'd like to get you guys' opinions on. Almost looks like a diogenite. I'm glad you're with us, Dave. Welcome from Australia, my man. <laughs> yeah, I vote Diogenite looking on that one, too. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's blowing think, that theory, though. What do you think that is, Dave? It's not now. Not if that's metal all through there. That That is metal. And uh, an olivine. That's the Shalovsky. What's the, the, fake, the fake Russian one? Yeah. You sure. are correct. Sorry, what was it? Oh. Shiraskovsky. Shiraskovsky. Mike, Mike might have some good information on that. Uh, they led an expedition in Russia, and that material was found, like the label says, in, in 2002. Uh, and it was for looking for a boloid that had gone over in uh, 1956 uh, in that area. So they were looking in an area for an old ball. Um, that material was found, and it was cut up and sold on the market uh as a palisite um but the kind of interesting thing is if you roll it back over and you look at the olivines in there there's a uh a ratio inside the olivines of how much nickel you should have associated mm -hmm. with the uh the olivine content <clears throat> and shirkovsky is way off the charts there's way too oh. much nickel in the olivines to to match up with what's found in meteorites the other interesting thing is um what looks like the matrix, uh, you know, the, the metal that would be surrounding the olivines. Typically, you would have with Mattenstein pattern growing in there. Uh, yep. With Shirakoski, you don't have that. It's actually a very uh, fine blend of uh, iron and then woosite, which is an iron oxide. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's a eutectic ratio. So it's a mixture of the, that iron and that oxide that formed... Um, and obviously didn't have time to really crystallize and grow uh, based on the fact that you can see there's there's no structure to it. Um, so it, it's proven to not be a meteorite because uh, besides the high nickel content in the olivines, it also doesn't have any of the accessory um, minerals you would find in meteorites. Thank you. Uh, so the composition is just not right in both the, the olivine and the uh, metal matrix itself and there are other signs that strongly lead people to understand that that was not a, uh, a meteorite so that was discredited uh, and, and again that's one of those uh, 70 some odd uh, pseudo meteorites in the Met Bowl um, ironically uh, it felt for more uh, than some real palisades do hmm. yes, it just shows you it's the old story you can't tell a book by its cover from the outside when you first showed it you know you didn't get the hint that there was so much metal in there it yeah was only when you turned it over the, you look at that and you got all those big green crystals and what have you, you think oh yeah diogenite <laughs> it's pretty close yeah. but then when you turn it over and you see oh help look at all that metal yeah. totally yeah. knocked that and on the, the stock pattern that michael mentioned is uh uh, crystalline growth of body center and face center cube for tainite and camasite in the nickel and iron combination. And it only occurs when the cooling rate is very, very slow, something on the order of 10,000 years per degree or slower. So oh, yeah, I know uh, it's been a while, so I wanted to say mm -hmm. hi to everybody. And I know uh, doing media wrong, so I got an interesting one to share with you. Mm. Turn that around. Um, you could see if i can catch the metal oh, wow. in there. it uh, looks like there's so a pattern that, there Wittmannstatten. <laughs> so that is mendata which is from illinois uh and that is a meteor wrong that was found in 2009 
and it's been assessed by a couple labs, and it's been determined that it is non-meteoritic, uh, but they can't determine its origin as far as whether it's terrestrial or man-made. Um, oh. But it was about 3.5 kilos, and it's definitely got one of the more interesting patterns that really does look meteoritic as far as the distribution of iron and metal and having some things in there that are almost roundish like chondrules. So I thought I would share that one. That one fooled a lot of people, and there was a lot of scientific uh, investigation into that one. Yeah, I would. That would fool me. Yep. So that was my uh, meteor wrong for the day. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. I have some more meteor wrongs and meteorites side by sides. So let's dig in. I'm going to show you something, and then you tell me is it a meteorite or not. Dum dum dum. It looks convincing. Okay. That is example number one. And this is example number two. That left much. Ooh. Wow. That looks like a mesosiderite. It does yeah. look like a mesosiderite, doesn't it? But it's not quite great shape it but is the, not in great shape at all the, i bet uh, i could i could snap it in half right now but i won't <laughs> this yeah. is bondock oh, it's a, oh um philippine. philippine yeah so here's bondock, bondock in, in his house and wow. we kind of thought sue and i thought earlier that you could uh yeah, you could mistake this for it you know if yeah. you didn't see them together if you saw them you know months apart and you're not dealing with this stuff every day you would say oh my god i saw that that's bondock but it's not it's it's i don't know what it is <laughs> but it is natural i think i don't think this is man-made at all no i don't think so either What are you guys seeing? I mean, it has features that if you, you could say maybe it looks like a palisite, but it's got so many vesicles in it. A lot of vesicles. Yep. Oh, yep. Bang. Yeah. <laughs> I agree, I agree. Yep. So Smoking this is an slag. example of, of slag. And as Mike said in his 101, um, you get all different type, types of slag, different qualities. This is obviously ugly, ugly stuff. Um, here's another one of the same stuff. Whereas um, oh, Mikey showed some slag that was actually mm -hmm. kind of pretty, you know? Mm -hmm. um, these could be mistaken potentially for something like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the, the slag is, that, that slag is way more uh, vesicular. Uh, oh, that's the new African uh, uh, palisite. Yeah, uh, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah, but you you can see them side by side. Like this is this is what people see side by side. Well, they see that and they're like, oh wow, it looks exactly like that. But when you see them side by side, they don't look like alike. Uh, and again, this is this is one of the bad things about meteorites. The great things about this is it's not rusting. You know, it, it's it is what it is. This is a nickel iron meteorite, and you can see it's rusting. I said that that is weathered. Yes, yeah. the Cerachos too were found in a low lying area and were exposed to very alkaline uh, soil, and, and that will help them rust quicker. If you look at this real meteorite, you'll see that I am not going to be taking it out of the case ever again because it is ready to fall apart. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but you can definitely see rust and, and uh, uh, an oxidation. So if you have a sample that you found and you cut it and it's shiny metal and it's been six months and it's still shiny metal and you put it outside overnight in the rain and it's still shiny metal, 
congratulations you got a hunk of earth <laughs> More, <laughs> these but like like pat i'm sorry like mike said these are stacks these are layers each of them is another fact another proof point nothing in itself is conclusive but when you start lining up all the negatives and the only two things you're holding on to you're gonna have to put it to reason I well, see. When, when it's polished up, the way you polished up that stone, it becomes such eye candy that it's sometimes you just think, oh, this has to be a meteorite. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that was beautifully. I mean, it's like a mirror finish you had on that. I'm not a rock hound. I don't, I don't go out and, and hunt and collect. These are ones that have been sent to, to me over the last couple of years for this exact purpose, to do outreach, to do education, to show them off to the greater audience. And, and what I think the power is showing them side by side with the real thing. Like people think this is Mars, but in fact, you know, while we're doing this, I, I, I don't know if uh, Jennifer's still on, but how oh, good she is. So these are ones that, um, that she found and cut and I thought were pretty interesting that I wanted to share in case anyone had feedback of what they are. Some kind of iron sulfide that you can find around the Great Lakes, including Minnesota and Michigan. Where were these found, Jennifer? Um, I like Michigan and Allegan. Okay. The, the one thing I'm seeing is like the soft swirls and the mixing of stuff. Even down in here, I'm seeing it all swirled and mixing. We, we're not in into the matrix here. Just looking at the outside of it. Um, Looking at the outside, to me, it looks a little like serpentine. Yeah, it almost has a jaspery kind of feel to it as well with the swirl. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of angular surfaces as well. And then even when we get inside, there's a lot of angular, uh, sharp, broken sort of surfaces. It could well be a terrestrial breccia of some sort. I was going to say, without a doubt, it's a breccia. I mean, that's the definition definition of breccia is the angular clasps inside of that stone. If they were more rounded, we would call it a conglomerate. That's right. But breccia, sure. I think, very wow. good term for that. I got a hell of a crew. A hell of a crew. I'm like, I'm so glad people know about uh, terrestrial rocks on our crew. This is why I don't want to do a meteor wrong show. <clears throat> I don't know meteor wrongs. I got my crew backing me up, which is awesome. Look at this one. <laughs> Those are those are super beautiful stones, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and this one stumps me. So I, I'd be proud to have. Yeah, them my, this stumps I me. Like I love it. I don't like these from a meteorite viewpoint. Obviously, we're talking about just the beauty of the rock itself. You should see. I don't say this very often, but you should see some of the dog shit meteorites people send me that are not meteorites. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is just horrible like it's hard not to laugh especially it's hard especially when they say i watch your shows all the time I'm like oh my god you gotta turn it back on and watch it again <laughs> no, I, I, don't think, I don't think it looks like a meteorite i just wonder if it's that sudbury onathian stuff i don't know enough about it to have a true yeah. opinion it looks but a little I different than read that, about it it and does look similar that's Could what it reminds that? me of that is exactly what it reminds me of. The other thing that's important too, to think when we're looking at the outside of these rocks, is that you know meteorites in their passage through our atmosphere get rounded off, and you get that sort of soft shoulder sort of look. But that sort of look can also be obtained by tumbling in water. This and one really looks like the salt to me. Oh yeah, yeah. Jennifer didn't send all of these to us as like, hey, are these meteorites? Some of these she just sent because she thought they were interesting rocks. Oh, absolutely. But also, yeah. I think that her identification skills have really gotten a lot stronger. Some of these were sent to us like 10 months ago, and I know that she's grown leaps and bounds since yeah. then. So, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Oh, that's an interesting one. Oh, that yeah. is interesting, isn't it? That's nice. Too sharp. They're too sharp and angular to be. Yeah, very mm -hmm. angular bits inside. But gosh dang. Yeah. So I think that one's gonna that one's gonna polish up nice. I th I think this is one. Uh, I hope I'm not getting myself in trouble. I think this is one we have earmarked to send to Jennifer as a gift for her to polish up because she'll make it look yeah. freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. um, um, 
What about this? A few moments later. Well, the that looks lunar. Yeah, the casual observer might say that that looks like lunar um, mare basalt. Yep. Uh, in that it has about the right colors. There's the white and various shades of gray, and there's even the little yellowish sort of stuff in there. Weathering cracks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Pat, I don't mean to put you on the spot. So you're you're saying this is terrestrial then, and for those reasons. Well, I think it. No, I. I well, I was saying it. It, oh, it resembles lunar oh, for those yeah. reasons. Okay, I was um, going to say I'll. I'll put you. I, I'm not. I never ever want to embarrass anyone. That's never my goal. So before I let anyone go down the path too far, I'll always step in. But yeah, uh, that's why I wanted to grab this one because I thought it was a really good example. This is obviously lunar. This is the. Uh, <laughs> this is. What is this one? Is it, is it a feldspathic brush? One four seven seven something. Yep. Or yeah, one, one four nine seven seven. Yeah. Um, just a really really beautiful um, lunar, and it again. I wanted to show this. I'm not going to show the polished side, so I'm going to show the the rough side against the rough side, and this is lunar, classified lunar next to terrestrial. Do you know? What? Do you know what's a really good indication of what just happened right there? Is do you know that do you notice when you put that up, like it was like crickets? Yeah. Uh -huh. No, no one was talking because somebody was looking for a feature that they could say that's that's not a that's not a meteorite. Yeah. But everybody was just that, like that really might that be. That was the only one bold enough to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer, I want to thank you personally for sending those samples in and allowing us to look at them and teach other people. Uh, it really means a lot. And that's what this is all about. So thank you very much. No uh, problem. Yeah, you Thanks. rock. I have two things that I can show off now that my camera is working. Um, this is the first one I want to show off just in case you guys missed it the first eight times. Now, this is the 43, well, what's left of the 43 gram piece of mars that i'm trying to well it's a piece of earth that i can't let go of and i'm waiting for science to come around and agree with me <laughs> um <laughs> now are there any meteorites in my hand i want to show you how convincing some meteor wrongs can actually be like that one right there it's taking the best scientists who do this for a living day in and day out, and they're still having to rely on their tech, on their equipment. Here it might be one of the last uh, ones for the day. So can I show you any in particular? I did. On the left, yeah. Mm-mm. I no. see the yeah. thing on that one. Nice looking surface, but uh, that one's the wrong shape. Again, lipping. It that one looks oriented. Mm -hmm. These were all purchased as. I believe Morocco unclassified irons, and they are like really like exactly what you expect them to be. This is the kind of one that uh, these are the two that really cinched it for me. Chris, you were talking about the uh, Chris, you were talking about the uh, orientation oriented look to it with the what I see. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but the negative pressure side here. Um, maybe a little bit of lipping up there, just meteorite looking. It, like I don't see anything here that's uh, not not terrestrial. Uh, see the then, funny thing about that first one that you were just showing, like the bottom of it where you see that negative pressure zone, like that to me looks oriented. But when you flip it over, it loses that characteristic. That doesn't look like the top of an oriented meteor. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have to be careful with the idea of oriented too, because that's a continuum. It can be a little bit or entirely oriented. True. Nice True. rollover lipping though. 
this one I actually sold and got back. I sold this as an oriented iron. And then my buyer, uh, who actually wor works at it, he's, he is a uh, uh, academic, and he bought these for classification purposes to find out if they were meteorites, and they are not meteorites. Yes. The, these. This is the reason to make a trip down to your local metal recycling place and uh, ask nicely and slip them a $20 bill and ask them to do an XRF measurement on them. Even even a window or a street test, a lot of things would have been really helpful. What uh, what our yep. friend, what my friend did with these to to validate that they were not meteorites uh, in his lab. Uh, one of the tests, I believe, if I if I remember correctly, one of the tests was a dissolution test or dis dissolution test. They uh, they uh -huh. drop basically drop it in water and, and or some liquid and see what dissolves. Yeah, I, I'm I'll, not I'll, super familiar with this Topher, but I know that Chris Hurd mm -hmm. from the Alberta University, Alberta State University in Canada, mm -hmm. he he does dissolution tests for some of his iron identifications. So I I don't know much about the process, but I just know people do it as as perfect. Okay. I, I I seem to recall this either going to Chris Hurd or him being part of the mix, but yes. Uh, but the, the 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 thing I wanted to point out with those is like it, it fooled the meteorite seller who sold them to me. It fooled me, and I then passed them along to a a, a client who was able to do validating validated testing and prove they're not meteorites. Well, he's so nice. He's you, if you don't know who he is, I'll just say this, and you'll probably re recognize who he is. He's a huge supporter of the knowledge bolide. And when he knew that uh, that these weren't meteorites, obviously, uh, he knew that I'd be interested in having one for this exact purpose, to share with everyone here that, you know, not everything that looks like a meteorite and possibly should or could be a meteorite because you bought it from a meteorite dealer is actually a real meteorite. Mm -hmm. Another thing that you can do, speaking of submerging the stone in water, is a specific gravity test. Mm -hmm. and, and the specific gravity between a meteorite, an iron meteorite, and an earth iron would be different. Yes, I'm really glad you brought that up. Um, there's a uh, specific gravity chart that that obviously carbonaceous is the is the least dense and iron is the most dense. And every rock, every meteorite will fall in that uh, in that line somewhere. Um, so I actually have a, uh, a specific get density chart that, that is really easy. You can just Google it. Um, but it tells you exactly where, so if you're doing that, that test and you come up with a 3.47, you can know that, oh, wow, that's what's it, or it maybe. So now we narrow it down a little bit more. Super and easy at home test that anyone can do with some very simple tools. There is one last thing before we get out of here. Um, we have a guest video. This is a, a video submission from a fan on YouTube, um, Doug, and he has some some nice stuff to say about us. Hi, everyone. Hi, Topher. Hi, Sue. Hi, all with the crew. This is Doug from Idaho. So... Topher posted Los Vientos 262 in one photo on his Facebook profile. And I cut this rock a few months ago, and, well, it kind of looked similar, so I thought I'd share it with you. I know you guys got a meteor wrong video going on tonight, so I, I don't know if this really qualifies for a meteor wrong or even a meteor maybe. But regardless, it kind of looked similar, so... Let's call it a look-alike, a Los Vientos look-alike. So what do you think? Do you guys think it kind of gets that title? Does it deserve that title? Anyways, thank you all for your interest in meteorites. I just absolutely love this subject. And I'm so grateful for all the videos that you post and all the knowledge that you share for free. Um, you guys are the best. You absolutely are. You got me through COVID quarantine why i like meteorites so much i have no idea but i do all right guys have a good one thanks for the show thanks for everything you do
Bye. That's awesome. And and on this Very cool. on this one here, we actually have uh this is the Los Vientos lookalike. This picture is the same as what was in the video. Um in the video he had I think he had just done some wet wet cutting and here it's dry. We get a lot of nice com comments as well on YouTube, so I appreciate everyone who is nice. So now I can show you the not side by side, but this is the meteorite that inspired him to think that that might be one. So this is Los Vientos 262. It's from Afghanistan. Af I never can say that without messing it up. It's from Chile. Antofagasta. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. oh, some of those words are so bad. Cacovilli. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at the middle through there. This one definitely shows shock things rather than cracks yep yeah and so the, the shock vein, you know they're they're solid they're not opened up and as dave noted there's some metal in some of those and that's that's common in shock veins because the the black shock the shocked material there is actually the same meteorite material but melted and then cooled very very quickly essentially into a glass and the, yeah. the metal won't dissolve into that glass, but it will be there as as blebs of, of melt or little uh, veins of melted metal. Fantastic. That's nice. And so this one does have some light porosity, and the rock that he showed uh, was slightly porous as well. But here, there's the very definite pieces of metal. And yeah. as Michael uh, mentioned, you can take those individual little bits and measure the resistance across them, and you'll see very, very close to zero ohms because they are, in fact, metal. Thank you, Pat. Some of the some of the things that I notice on this, obviously, were already pointed out, but I'm going to just identify that these shock veins. These are really only going to be. Uh, you're going to see those, you're not going to really see those in earth rocks because they have to have, go through a lot of pressure in order to, to get the shock, uh, shock veins and shock melt um, patches. And then when you flip it over, you see that it is not a terrestrial rock. We have the ever so slightest thinness of a of fusion crust that has come off, literally showing you how thin the fusion crust is. Mm -hmm. um, from this angle, it's even more apparent. This is this is more rock that's been removed. That's not all fusion crust. But you can see that it literally, it's very, very thin. Yeah, fusion crust is generally between 0.1 and 0.5 millimeters. There are some very rare cases where it can be as thick as one millimeter, such as peak scale. And the shock veins, in order to get that black melt glass, we're talking gigapascal level of uh, impact or pressure. Uh, so that that really only occurs in atomic explosions and uh, meteoroid impacts. So that's uh, uh, a nice fan slash viewer video submission. And we keep I keep offering the uh, the invitation. If anyone wants to join the Hangout, they're more than welcome. Uh, Sue usually posts. Uh, an announcement about it on our Facebook page uh, every week. It gives you the login information and what the subject is going to be. Um, so we'd love to have people join us. Well, we are going to continue the conversation here with the Knowledge Bowl I'd Hangout, <clears throat> but you are no longer invited. Thanks for watching up till now. We definitely appreciate it. And uh, Remember, if you like what you see here, we're the only ones doing this. Uh, there's, no, there's nothing else like this on YouTube. So if this is what you like and you must because you're watching it, why not support me on Patreon or on Facebook? It really does make a big difference. So thanks a lot, guys. Take care.
we also have to remember too that you know when you're wandering around out in the yard looking at rocks um there are the the you know the vast majority of meteorites are chondrites and you can see chondrules in them. the ones that aren't the achondrites have gone through a differentiation process that is they started out as regular stony iron meteorites and uh were separated had the metal separated from the silicates uh and that planet forming process and that melting process occurs on many many parent bodies including our own earth mm -hmm. we we were kind of talking about this pre-recording and one of the things that i said was achondrites scare the crap out of me mm -hmm. like i we all like to purchase stuff and and whatever some of us classify stuff but like an achondrite trying to purchase something off of pictures and then send it in for classification and go through that process. You're waiting a year to find out you got an earth rock. Yeah. 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 You're rolling the and, dice big time. And that's why Sue made the decision. Well, we, we I was just about to say, we talked about this the other yeah. day. We made the decision and Sue is acting as the enforcer. There is, e even if, even if I have no reason not to believe you, if you're one of my North African friends and you're putting up a picture of an unclassified achondrite, it's not going to be allowed on my on You're my out of page. here. Yeah, <laughs> um, it, it's it's just the fact someone said earlier that we we don't want to mix wrongs and rights and confuse people. When you come to Topher Spin Meteorites on on YouTube, except for today, but on Facebook especially. 100% of everything is a real meteorite. And I, and that is, we, we're really trying to limit people from participating with unclassifieds that I can't validate quickly with a picture and give it my confidence level. Uh, and, and Chris, you're exactly, exactly right. It's the achondrites that drive us wild uh, as far as, I don't know what it is. I don't see anything. I, I don't see chondrules. I don't see just, um, the metal dispersal that I'm looking for. I don't see fusion crust on it. Like, I don't see what I need to see to say this is a meteorite. Yeah, I, it, it's I a even told Topher, thing. I said, I don't want to ask Pat for his opinion on every single achondrite that someone unclassified that they put up in our group anymore, because I just can't tell. You can tell a regular, you know, ordinary chondrites i don't want someone selling an unclassified achondrite in our group like i just don't want that there was there was somebody uh, uh from a continent i won't mention uh who was very insistent who posted i think three times uh, over a few minutes uh his uh alleged unclassified achondrite uh, trying to post to to the topper spin group and it was denied because it uh yeah, I will yeah. say I love going through the activity log to see who's done what. <laughs> Go under Pat, deny, deny, deny. I'm like, yeah. hell yeah, dude. God, Pat's a mean old man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm mean too. I'm I'm getting lots of hate mail since I laid down the law. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, right yes. now I'm I'm going to tap Allison on the shoulder to talk to us a little bit about hot rocks. Hot rocks, everybody. Ooh. Uh and see if she's still with us. She Is said something about her phone sucking. Oh, okay. Well, okay, these okay. Well, I'll fill in. I'm I'm not going to be as nice as Allison, uh, but no, these were <laughs> rocks that she found while metal detecting. Um, they there's a lot of hot rocks that will set off your uh, metal detector, and these are ones that she brought home. And she just again, she she had the rock fever. She couldn't let them go. She had to do something with them. You know, polish them up. I'll do this. There's got to be something meteorite in there. If I, if I dig far enough, and you know, but so maybe I harangued her story. But that's what these are. <laughs> yeah, so, so hot rocks. You know, metal detectors work by sending out a radio frequency field, and it sets up eddy currents in metallic things, and the metal detector through its receiving coil can can find that, um, and 
the way that the gold basin stream field was found was by people out metal detecting for gold who kept finding all these hot rocks and they brought home bags full of hot rocks that were eventually identified as meteorites. However, that does not mean every hot rock is a meteorite. Most of them are not hematite and other normal terrestrial things. And by the way, when your metal detector says nickel, it is not, determ not determining that your sample contains the element nickel. It says your sample has the same conductivity as a US five cent coin called a nickel. Mm -hmm. Did you guys all get a chance to see this on Facebook? Or some of you? I, I did. I saw it on YouTube, did I not? And I yeah, saw on, on YouTube, YouTube as well, yeah. So I, co I collected the numbers from a few different places. And um, it's a trend I've been noticing on our quizzes that, you know, when I put up, you know, maybe some media rights and media wrongs, or, you know, which one of these is Palisite. Um, one of the groups always performs better than the other group. <laughs> and that is any uh, the Facebook um, group members of Topher Spin Meteorites group always perform better than the YouTube. Um, so that just goes to show you that you do learn when you join the Topher Spin Facebook group, <laughs> the Topher Spin Meteorites Facebook group. So um, I will not, I'm not gonna name names, but number one, um, is a beautiful meteorite. Does anybody know what it is? Somebody, I'm not going to say who, but somebody on the crew just um, committed to purchasing this. Oh, it's Spirit Joe. Spirit Joe. <laughs> Spirit Joe. It is gorgeous. Now that picture yeah. doesn't even capture. It is gorgeous. It is one of the nicest Spirit I've ever seen in person. It is so shiny and sparkly. It, and I'm like of the right of the mind that I always want palisades cut and sliced, but I was like, oh, you can't do anything to this one. It's so pretty, but I'm like, oh, I bet it's even prettier inside. I don't know what to do. Um, <laughs> so it's really pretty. So not one person in the Facebook group picked that as the media wrong. However, 45% of the um, users on YouTube picked it as the media wrong. That was their number one choice. Yes, I was, I couldn't uh, believe yeah. it. So um, the second place for what people chose as the media wrong was number three, and that's actually a meteorite. 23% um, of people chose that as a media wrong. And I'm not gonna name the person either on this one, but one of the people on the crew uh, said, oh, that's the media wrong. And I lost my mind. I was laughing so hard and I had to um, call him and say, this is a meteorite you purchased from us. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> and he's like, oh my I've been gosh. working a lot of hours. I'm tired. Yeah. It's the we, lighting. It's the camera angle. We won't mention any names at <laughs> no, all. No, we're not going. No, he you probably betcha. wouldn't mind, but <laughs> you <laughs> betcha. In all fairness, uh, it's a very, here. very weathered. Uh, very Hakuda. weathered. Yeah. Very weathered Hakata, and he bought yeah. it, I think, because it was a Hakata, and you know, not necessarily for the beauty of it, but hey, uh, that's a palace that I need. Ooh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is he here? No. Oh, okay. That I thought was, I heard. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that was one of the that was one of the reasons oh, why you chose the right. ones. One of the reasons why you chose the ones that you chose because exactly <laughs> we really wanted people to to look at that uh, uh, palace site up there and go, oh no, no problem, that is definitely real. And then <laughs> literally look at that one and go, what is that piece of crap with holes in it? Yeah. So, uh, what it keep? Oh, it keeps going to the next one. So, number two, obviously, we discussed in depth today, mm -hmm. and that was Sherkovsky. <laughs> um, and only twenty one percent of the people chose this as the media wrong. And then number four, um, does anybody know what that is? Obviously, it's a media right, since we already you know singled out the media wrong. Any well, guesses? Then Cubanite of some sort. Yeah, it looks like good. A weathered oh. show. I'll, I'll sell it to you as a gooch, but it's, it's a weathered yeah. Sarah show. Oh. <laughs> Is it? Well, Jules, right. you just you just looked at our whole Sarah show collection yesterday. <laughs> so no, you might have I, 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 I have Sarah show that looks just like it. So yeah, <laughs> I mm -hmm. know you and you and Chris both cut some weathered Sarah show for us earlier this year too, because for some reason the the people on Etsy really loved uh, weathered Sarah show. They, it was just getting scooped up. When we had an Etsy account. Um, but yeah, so I just thought that was really interesting um, just to see also the disparity between the people that are just watching the videos and the people that have taken that extra step and are now participating. So um, YouTube 
21% of the people got it correct. In the Facebook group, 60% of the people got it correct. Hmm. Well, so definitely yeah. interact, interacting definitely helps. Definitely. Mm -hmm. yep. And the last thing I will say is, and Mike said this, Topher said this, Pat said this, I think everyone um, has like chimed in on this, that you need to get some authentic meteorites because mm -hmm. I've yes. never taken geology class. I've never studied geology. However, and the, um, Topher will tell you when he shows me photos, I almost always get them right. And that's because, not because I'm um, smart in geology, it's because mm -hmm. I'm handling meteorites every day. That's oh, why. Yeah. I, I can't tell you, I don't, some sound. I can't tell you sometimes why I don't think it's a meteorite, but I, I just know because I've looked at thousands of them now and, and that yeah. having real meteorites makes a huge difference. So buy some sure with meteorites. <laughs> that's what they do with uh, bank tellers and that. They don't, they oh, don't with money. show them. <laughs> They don't, yeah, they don't show them false, you know, um, banknotes. They just see the real stuff day after day after week yeah. after month. Yeah. And so when you're seeing the real stuff all the time, a fake banknote sticks out like a sore toe. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. So would we say thumb up in the Northern Hemisphere and you guys say sore toe in the <laughs> Southern Hemisphere? <laughs> right. 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 